Hey guys, uh, Pragmatic Addict here. Uh, thanks for clicking into this video. So this is going to be a little bit of a different video. So it dawned on me that it is like, like we got like five days or so left of this month. And both last year and this year, I have not had the time to review all the movies I want. There are going to be movies in this video um, as well as the next one where I'm going to be doing the same kind of format where I've wanted to talk about uh, as well as last year and I just haven't had the time to so it dawned on me where I'm like why don't I just do do a video you know here and there where I just combine them we do mini reviews and they're kind of recommendations of a sort so we're going to be doing that and in this video we're going to be talking about five of my favorite uh, 2010 horror movies. Now these aren't going to be all my favorites from the 2010s. I'm leaving a few out as well as for example Creepy Creep 2 which probably would be on this list but I've already reviewed them so these are five of some of my favorite horror films of the 2010s. So yes without further ado uh, let's get right into this video. So starting off this list we're going to be talking about IT. <laughs> so it was one of my most anticipated films of 2017 when it came out. I really did not know what to expect from this movie. <laughs> Stephen King film adaptations are very hit and miss, and I'm not gonna lie, uh, the first kind of like views I saw of Pennywise in the trailer, I was like, well, it's not Tim Curry. It's not Tim Curry. But I tell you, this film has some of the best acting I've ever seen from child actors, <laughs> especially with its runtime. I think that the film not only as a part one, just in general, really has a good layout to it, very good pacing. It feels very nostalgic in a sense. It feels kind of like an 80s or 90s uh, kind of like adventure uh, film for kids as well, you know, as well as like putting that into horror. Kind of like the Goonies meets it. And that's one thing that the original miniseries just didn't really do well. I honestly don't know entirely how I feel about the IT miniseries. Um, obviously the big standout was Tim Curry. And in this one, while Bill Skarsgård is a massive talent in it, the whole movie, in a sense, is a standout. <laughs> Everything about this movie really works well except for like a few minor flaws. What I love about this film is that it's not really just centered on, you know, Pennywise the Clown. You really see a lot of different forms that this, you know, menace can take. And you really see, weirdly enough, really good chemistry with him and these characters. I got into, I got invested in this film immediately. I saw it day one. Uh, again, it is a pretty long movie, but I saw this film, I want to say, like three times in the theaters. And I could not wait for the second one, which maybe I'll talk about in another video. But yes, it is absolutely one of the very best Stephen King film adaptations and it's one that ever since its release I've watched every October. I give it 2017 an 8.6. Next on the list, ooh, ooh, we've been wanting to talk about this one. Hereditary. Yes, I'm finally talking about Hereditary. I've been trying to make a video on this movie for quite a while. I've wanted to do a review. I've thought about doing like a top 10 horror films of 824. <laughs> I've thought about even doing a fucking analysis video on it. This film is nuts, dude. Nuts as shit. This is probably the craziest like horror film we've gotten in the 2010s. So weirdly enough, as a fan of A24, I actually didn't see this like in theaters. <laughs> I actually didn't even really hear much about it and <laughs> a a a A24 is, is, is very... <laughs> you know, uh, different with their promotions. Uh, you have to really, you know, see the right type of films. You have to really be looking and keeping an eye out for A24's uh, promotions and their material. <laughs> this is a film that I had missed. And I remember it was uh, Tyler's birthday and we, we I, I, I'm at his house and he's like, dude, I got Hereditary. And I'm like, what about it? And he's like, dude, you haven't seen Hereditary. <laughs> so we popped this movie in. And I could not stop thinking about it for that entire month. I knew the first time that I finished this film, the only thing I could think of was, yeah, oh yeah, this is one of my new favorite horror movies. This goes away from every cliche that you see in a horror movie. This makes the characters so believable, so realistic. It is not even necessarily a horror film. It is just a dramatic family film of... A family going through trauma one thing after another and they're just falling apart and the trauma that you know some of the trauma that actually interferes with that is you know hauntings and satanism and death and grief and a lot of different things that can emotionally and physically psychologically make somebody unhinged this is a film that i wouldn't even necessarily call it a slow burn it is just 
it is a very thought-provoking psychological film that <laughs> is kind of traumatizing in its sense. There are some iconic scenes from this movie that <laughs> will probably make like a standout for time in horror history. <laughs> The, like, for, for those of you that have seen Hereditary, which I'm sure a lot of you have by now, this is a movie that you cannot watch and say, eh, it was okay. The only thing that I can really think of by, that would make somebody turn off in that way is because of the subject material. It's because of how dark of a film it is. This is a film that is so just mindfuckery and so intense and traumatizing and horrifying in every spiral. Like, it requires rewatchings. That's why I wanted to do an analysis video on this, which I might at some point, but <laughs> for this video now, I'm just leaving it in, in the five for this video. You gotta watch Hereditary. If you've seen it, you gotta watch it every October. <laughs> I'm giving Hereditary an 8.4. Next on my list is not necessarily a horror film. It's Kind of a horror, more mystery, thrill, or drama. <laughs> this is The Gift by Joe Edgerton. This movie is awesome, dude. It is not, I wouldn't necessarily call it a horror film. It is uh, categorized in that horror sense, but <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily call it a horror film. It's more, again, of a mystery of a, you know, kind of like keeps you guessing kind of a thriller. But it is definitely an unsettling watch. Not an unpleasant one, an unsettling one though. So this film is about a uh, guy played by uh, Joel Edgerton who also wrote and directed the movie named Gordon. And we, uh, I'm not gonna say exactly how things escalate and how they start, but basically Jason Bateman plays a high school bully from his past and Gordon is maybe out for revenge at this guy. And you just kind of see how Gordon's character has really been built throughout this movie and why he is where he is and what all you know went down and how it all escalates this is a real like you know nail biter of a film again it's not exactly scary but it is intense it is really unsettling and it's like, what Joel Edgerton did as his directorial debut is honestly just genius this film just really depicts what kind of a genius Joel Edgerton is. Gift is a really underrated one. I remember seeing like one trailer for this film uh, back when it came out in 2014 and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, no, I gotta see this. And I, and I remember seeing it that day <laughs> that it came out and I remember I was like one of the only people in the theater and I, thank, thankfully, because I cannot hold my shit in the theater. This movie is nuts. It is bonkers. It does really feel like, not necessarily a horror film, but it's one that you can kind of see yourself watching every Halloween because it is weird and twisted and kind of, again, unsettling and the events that ha that take place in it really make for kind of a spooky good time. Definitely check out The Gift. I don't think that you'll be disappointed at all. I am giving The Gift an 8.3. Get Out, because you're not going to make a 2010s horror film list without talking about Get Out. <laughs> Get Out was one of the most unexpected, best horror films I had ever seen. <laughs> really, this is not even in my top, you know, of 2010. This is of the 2010s. This is just flat out one of my favorite horror films of all time. I was a big fan of Jordan Peele from the start, you know, from Mad TV, Key and Peele, Keanu, <laughs> and when I heard that he was going to be doing a directorial debut, not only, but a horror film. I could not wait. I was like, this movie is either going to just bomb or it's going to be all right, you know, but not get the attention that it deserves. Bullshit. This is a milestone for horror. For horror. This really made history with a uh, black director, uh, you know, making a horror film that is centered on black a black character who's actually, you know, the you know, stand out in the film, who's actually one that's not, you know, who's kind of getting left out. <laughs> There's a, a series that I saw on a shutter called Horror Noir, where Jordan Peele talks a lot about Get Out, and it's really interesting because it goes into a lot of the lore and a lot of the backstory and a lot of the background and build up leading to this film. <laughs> this movie is a very timely film. It's got a lot of a uh, racial kind of uh, commentary to it. It's a very unsettling film in its sense because it is literally white people against black. <laughs> and you really see a psychological and mind-numbing like horror that was crafted by Jordan Peele in that sense. I think that this is probably one of the most original horror films I've seen in, you know, years and years. Uh, Get Out is definitely the best film of 2017. It is one of the best horror films I have ever seen. And this film, this gets a 9.3.
3. Absolutely watch Get Out. I watch this film all the time. It's it's one of those uh, films where if if you haven't seen it, you're seeing it with me. You're seeing it with me. And if you, you know, if I invite somebody over, this is generally one of the films that we watch with a group of people because it is so just it, it's one that you really have to comment on one that you really have to sit through and you know uh talk amongst a lot of uh, other people and a lot of different thoughts it's a very ho fun horror film in its sense and i absolutely love Gor jordan peele in the uh horror uh genre right now speaking of jordan peele last but not least we have us <laughs> us is a film that is not quite as good as get out but god damn it is great and obviously with uh, how excited I was about Get Out and how well I thought of it, I couldn't wait for Us. And once again, it did not disappoint. One of the best films of 2019 in my view, which 2019 is probably the best like year for a film that I've ever lived through. I absolutely love that year, and this is no exception to the many titles that review that released that year that were absolutely phenomenal. This is another film that more or less could have some uh, <laughs> racial commentary to it. It's not quite as like uh, you know hard hitting as uh, Get Out is, but <laughs> this uh, follows a family. <laughs> um, <laughs> where uh, they're going on vacation to their beach house, I guess you could call it, <laughs> and basically end up seeing doppelgangers of themselves that are, you know, out to kill them. And doppelgangers with everybody in that sense. <laughs> it is a very weird, kind of like apocalyptic-ish movie, <laughs> but it is really original in its sense. It is very genuinely horrifying. I thought that this was a lot more on the nose of scary than Get Out was. And it's got an ending that really has gotten me you know, just not stop talking ever since I saw this movie in the theater for the first time. I'm going to give Us an 8.4. So these are five films that I've been wanting to talk about ever since I really started this channel, which, you know, last October was the only uh, real October that this channel actually went through. And I remember there were so many movies I wanted to talk about because I love October and I love the Halloween and horror, you know, area. <laughs> and... You know, it came it came down to these last couple days, and I was like, there's just no way I'm going to talk about every movie I want to talk about. So I decided to make this list, and I have another one coming, actually, uh, following this week <laughs> that I'm really excited to get into as well. But yes, those are five horror films of the 2010s that I really, really admire that I would love to you know, for you guys to check out if you haven't, that I would love to talk with you guys about if you would like to. And uh, if there is any of these movies that you guys would like me to do a full or uh, more in-depth review on, let me know. I absolutely love talking about these films. I absolutely love watching them, and I would absolutely be honored to do anything like that. So yes, these are five films, guys, that I've always wanted to talk about from the 2010s, and uh, I'm glad I got to, um, you know, in, the, in this kind of... Uh, different sense. Again, I've never really done a video like this, but I'm glad I got to talk about these at least a little bit. <laughs> so let me know what you guys thought about the video uh, down in the comments below, and I will be doing another video uh, in this sense uh, following very soon. So take care, guys. Hope you guys are having a really good day, and definitely uh, check out these films. Take care, guys. I'll see you in the next video.